Hello, good morning. Today we're going to talk about this uh, two block, two color quilt that I started in series approximately two weeks ago. And I'm going to talk about my process and decisions that I made along the way and changes that I made along the way. So stay tuned for all of that. And at the end, I'm going to reveal what next video is going to be all about. Hello, my name is Angela Davis and I'm the Forum Quilter. And this is the second um, in a series that I'm calling the Two Color Two Block Quilt Series. And I started out with a basic nine patch. And then I wanted to do my second block as the center as a miniature nine patch with four sides in each color. But those four sides are, were going to be at an angle, not a straight seam. Therefore, they were going to have what's called Y seams. Now, if you're new to quilting, a Y seam is where the intersection in the seam does not cross at a 90 degree angle. It crosses at some type of a 60 degree angle or a 30 degree angle where it creates a Y which means you have to sew from one end of the seam into that point, stop and pivot and sew out to the opposite seam. And you don't cross all the way to the cut edge. You stop at the seam, the seam line. It's not an easy thing to do. And I can contest to that because I ended up making one and it came out all crooked and uneven. So that was my first decision was how do I salvage this block into a second block? Well, in the end, I decided to use the mini nine patch as a cornerstone and just finish the quilt with lattice strips. And I'm very happy with how it turned out. Now it is not a two block, two color. It's still a two color quilt, but it's not a two block quilt. So lesson learned, next time I want to do something that has Y seams in it, I need to practice and practice and practice to perfect my Y seams before I decide to put it in a quilt for video. So I think all in all, it turned out very well. I do like how the mini four, uh, the mini nine patches look in the cornerstones with the white lattice strips. Uh, the quilt does measure approximately 39 inches by 39 inches, which is a nice size lap quilt, and I'm happy with that. But um, I will say that when I started out deciding to make uh, the red and white quilt, sometimes when we make decisions, I know I do, I overthink them, and I overthink the design element and I overthink the process too much instead of just saying okay I'm picking these two blocks let me do a sample of each one first to see how they progress what challenges they have and what my where I'm at with my quilt making in regard to those challenges is it a block where I've bitten off more than I can chew. And that's what happened with that block, with the Y seams. I just bit off more than I could chew. If I had done a sample block in advance, I would have said, okay, that's not working. Let's choose a second block. Instead, I waited until all these were done and all these were done. And then I was stuck with, I need to make a decision and I need to make a decision quickly. So in the future, for me, lesson learned, when I decide to do another two color, two block quilt, I need to take a step back and do maybe just one block of each, a sample to see what the process is. Am I up for that particular design as far as my skills? And I may, am I able to translate that in my teaching so that I can relay it to you? So this particular uh, quilt was uh, a good lesson for me in my process, in my learning, but also in my teaching. How do I relay the quilt in regard to you and how I can show you how to make the quilt with ease 
um, instead of running into roadblocks, which is what happened with me here. But all in all, I'm happy with it. Um, it's a thread, a thread. There's always threads, isn't there? Um, I'm happy with it and it'll be a nice little lap quilt. My next quilt, uh, when I went in my basement to look at my colors for my next two color, two block quilt in this series, I came across two bins, very big overflowing bins of scraps. Not little boxes, bins. So I think my next quilt is going to be uh, not about attacking the scraps and how I organize them, which is what uh, my la uh, a few videos ago where I did attack the scraps. This next one is gonna, gonna be take that step one, one step further. How am I going to organize them and put them into an orga and organize them into a quilt? So my next video is all, all going to be about organizing those scraps for a quilt because I just feel embarrassed that I'm gonna make another quilt, but I still have all these scraps that haven't been used. So what good are they being organized or and or unorganized if I'm just adding to that pile and adding to that pile without doing something with it? So I think I'm gonna um, take a break from the two color two block quilt series and I'm gonna dive into my scraps. And judging from my numbers, I, I got uh, some really good positive feedback from my last, from my first in the two color two block quilt series and I am going to come back to it, but I feel as though, what right do I have to buy more fabric if I, oh my gosh, if you could see the two bins overflowing downstairs in my basement. <laughs> it's shameful is what it is. <laughs> I, I just, I need to do something. I need to dwindle that down a little bit uh, so that in the start of the new year, I can start new projects for 2024 and not feel guilty. I mean, really, how, 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 much, how, how, many, how much scraps do I need to accumulate before I start making quilts out of these scraps? So this video is not a how-to of making this red and white quilt because it is a basic nine patch. And there's lots of videos out there about how to make a nine patch. Whether you wanna do it in a three inch finished size block, a six inch finish, finished size block, or a nine inch finished size block. Lots of videos out there on how to make um, this particular design. It's a very beginner friendly, easy quilt to make. It lays out beautifully in two colors, whatever two colors you choose. It would also lay out beautifully in a scrap quilt. So again, this is not a how-to on how to make this quilt. This was a, this video was about choices I made along the way, my learning process, as with each video, I learned a little bit more about how to create my next YouTube video. And it's also to consider Seriously, do I make another fabric pur purchase or do, should I really dive into those scraps? And I'm at the point where I'm just thinking, I need, to I need to get rid of some of those scraps. I really do. So my next video is going to be all about um, choosing my fabrics for my scraps uh, to create my next quilt and then the process of creating that next quilt. So uh, from me to you, Angela, uh, the 4M Quilter, where I share, care, and create with you. I'm sharing my process, creating something for you, and um, caring about my viewers and saying thank you for all of your comments. I love them. Um, continue giving me a thumbs up. Um, thank you for, for your support along our journey as we learn from each other. And I do learn from your comments as well. And I try to read all of your comments and respond to all of them. Uh, so with that and the holiday season upon us, here's a little, little hug from Angela. Um, have a great day. Have a great week. And join me here 
uh, for my next video when I attack my scraps to create a new quilt top. Have a great week. I'm Angela Davis. I'm the 4M quilter. Why sleep when you can sew? Bye.